Today, let's talk about the shape of the indifference curves and marginal rate of substitution. I have explained in the previous video that indifference curves are downward sloping. It is because of the assumption that more of a good is better than less. First, let's move on to the shape of the indifference curve or IC. People always face trade offs. If you have more of one good, then you can only have less of another. I will explain this on the basis of a figure. Suppose there are only two goods, food and clothing. At point A, there are 16 units of clothing and 1 unit of food, as can be seen in the figure. At point B, there are 10 units of clothing and 2 units of food. At point D, there are 6 units of clothing and 3 units of food. At point E, there are 4 units of clothing and 4 units of food. At point G, there are 3 units of clothing and 5 units of food. The shape of an indifference curve describes how a consumer is willing to substitute one good for another. Let's have a look again at the figure. Starting at market basket A and moving to market basket B, we can see that the consumer is willing to give up 6 units of clothing to obtain 1 extra unit of food. This means that the consumer is willing to sacrifice 6 units of cloth for 1 additional unit of food. As we can see, the number of units of clothes fall to 10, that is 16 minus 6 and number of units of food increases to 2. However, in moving from B to D, he is willing to give up only 4 units of clothing to obtain an additional unit of food. So, the number of units of cloth fall to 6 here, that is 10 minus 4 and the number of units of food increases to 3. In moving from B to E, he will give up only 2 units of clothing for 1 additional unit of food. Hence, it is clear that the more clothing and less food a person consumes, the more clothing he will give up in order to obtain more food. With this in mind, let's move on to marginal rate of substitution. Marginal rate of substitution or MRS is used to quantify the amount of one good that a consumer will give up to obtain more of another. As I told earlier, when the consumer is in the upper left portion of the IC, his willingness to sacrifice one good for the other will be more. This willingness will be less as he moves downwards to the right. The MRS is used to quantify the same. MRS measures the maximum amount of a good that a consumer is willing to give up in order to obtain one additional unit of another good. So, the MRS of foot F for clothing C is the maximum amount of clothing that a person is willing to give up to obtain one additional unit of food. For example, if the MRS is 3, then this means that the consumer will give up 3 units of clothing to obtain one additional unit of food. If the MRS is half, then it means that the consumer is willing to give up only half unit of clothing. Here, the clothing appears on the vertical axis and foot on the horizontal axis. When we describe the MRS, we must be clear about which good we are going to give up and which we are getting more of. Here, we will define the MRS in terms of units of clothes that the consumer is willing to give up in order to obtain one extra unit of food. We can denote the change in clothing by delta C and the change in foot by delta F. And the MRS can be written as minus delta C by delta F, that is, change in clothing with respect to change in foot. Delta C is always negative. This is because the consumer gives up clothing to obtain additional units of food. From here, let's try to understand the MRS at points B, D, E, and G. At point B, the change in clothing 
is 16 minus 10 that is 6 units and the change in foot is 1 unit that is 2 minus 1. So MRS will be minus delta C by delta F which is minus 6 divided by 1 which equals minus 6. At point B the change in clothing is 10 minus 6 that is 4 units and change in foot is 3 minus 2 that is 1 unit. Hence the MRS will be minus 4 divided by 1 which is minus 4. The MRS is negative as the change in units of clothing is negative. At point E, the change in units of clothing is 2 units that is 6 minus 4 and the change in units of foot is 1 unit that is 4 minus 3. Here, the MRS will be minus 2 divided by 1 that is minus 2 units. At point G, the change in units of clothing is 4 minus 3 that is 1 unit and change in units of foot is 5 minus 4 that is 1 unit. So the MRS will be minus 1 divided by 1 that is 1 unit. When we consider the slope, I have already explained in a previous video that the slope will be equal to the ratio of change in the vertical intercept to the change in the horizontal intercept. So the slope of IC at any point will be the change in the units of clothing with respect to the change in the units of food. This is nothing but the marginal rate of substitution. Thus the MRS at any point is equal in magnitude to the slope of the indifference curve. I have already explained that the MRS or the slope falls as we move down the indifference curve. This decline in the MRS reflects an important characteristic of consumer preferences. As we saw, the slope of the indifference curve increases, that is, it becomes less negative as we move down the curve. In other words, an indifference curve is convex if the marginal rate of substitution diminishes along the curve. As I explained earlier, the MRS of foot for clothing at point B is 6. The MRS declines to 4 when the indifference curve moves from point B to point D. From D, when we move to E, the MRS is 2. Starting at E and moving to G, we get an MRS of 1. This implies that as foot consumption increases, the slope of the indifference curve falls in magnitude. Thus, the MRS also falls. As more and more of one good is consumed, we can expect that a consumer will prefer to give up fewer and fewer units of a second good to get additional units of the first one. This is the reason for the convex shape of the IC. It is due to the declining marginal rate of substitution. As we move down the indifference curve and as the consumption of food increases, the additional satisfaction that a consumer gets from more food will diminish. Thus, he will give up less and less clothing to obtain additional food. Another way of describing this principle is that consumers generally prefer balanced market baskets that is the basket containing all of the goods to market baskets that contain all of one good and none of another that is he will prefer an optimal amount of clothing and food to all clothing and no food or all food and no clothing in the next video i'll explain about the shapes that indifference curves can take in case of perfect substitutes perfect complements etc thank you